What will be left of us 1,000 years from this night? Will there be any trees here? Sweet juniper and cedar to dust their perfume on another sitting pair? Not these, maybe, that lend themselves to our warmth, but their grandchildren or great-grandchildren, grown perhaps a little taller. A tree takes no thought that it grows in the mulch of its forebears, but it can only be because for eons preceding its forest of kin grew and thrived and rotted in their place, leaving behind only the soil whence they sprang a little richer. A tree does not know this, does not know that it, too, will play this part, will nourish its children with its very elements until fire or blight or men end its line. I remember my grandfather, but not well. It is not given to boys to remember things as they should. He was a strong man, like Scotch thistle, and just as stubborn. He did his own planting up to the year he died, not because he didn't want help. I think more to spit in the eye of the cancer that was colonizing his body. The summer of my eleventh year, my parents sent me over for a week to mend his fences. I had to walk every perimeter of the barley and alfalfa plots with a hammer and a bucket of half-inch staples to reattach any wire that had come loose in the winter. It would have taken my grandfather less than a day in his old pickup, but he insisted I was the only one for the job. Maybe he just wanted to watch me, see the grass snakes and daydream of boyhood again from under his fraying straw hat. I can't imagine my grandfather as a young man. Whenever I hear about him when he was a boy or first married, I can only picture myself in his place. One day that week, he told me about his grandfather, who must have died close to 50 years before I was born. He and his sweetheart were some of the first people to settle here in the country. She was the daughter of a music teacher, and I guess he had taken a fancy to her. One day, he rode down off the mountain on his black mare to call. She was in the yard hanging the wash. He asked her if she would mind much going for a ride with him. She said she wouldn't, only she had to get the wash up first. So he got down off his horse and the two of them hung it up in no time. Only they never went for that ride. Though it didn't happen to him, that somehow is the closest memory I have of my grandfather. And as it is for me every time I think of it, so it must have been for him that it is us riding the black mare down off the mountain and seeing a girl with amber curls humming softly in the Saturday breeze.